Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for clicking on my video. I'm trying something new, a video series in which I show how I vector. As opposed to my Fulfillment Fridays where I'm interacting with an audience, this will be strictly myself and the artwork in front of me, showing how I do well, what I do for both my comics and uh, videos. And today we're gonna start with something simple. I need to create the cutie marks of the main six, Princess Celestia and Princess Luna. Also, I can arrange them in a constellation for a video. Now, in truth, there's always a simpler way to do things. For example, the MLP Vector Club on DeviantArt. These folks put a lot of time and energy into vectoring images from the show. Characters, settings, I especially appreciate their backgrounds. And yes, also cutie marks. So, I could just simply pull cutie marks from these various uh, pages. There's cutie marks from minor and background ponies. And there are also cutie marks for, well, characters I don't believe I've seen before. And yet, here they are. So, if you're ever in need, give the MLP Vector Club a look first. But it would defeat the purpose for myself uh, to simply copy-paste. Now, I want to show you some of the tricks of the trade, so I'm going to present myself for the challenge right now. I will draw Princess Celestia's cutie mark using only shapes. And to help you see what in the hay I'm doing, I will add this handy dandy keyboard. It will demonstrate all the shortcuts because I live by shortcuts. Uh, no menu options for me, thank you very much. Though it's worth noting that I am a Mac user. So PC users, you're gonna have to remember to say, uh, hit control instead of command. Now one other advantage is that I'm using a full uh, screen capture rather than a window. For reasons I don't understand, Illustrator cannot show all these pop-out panels if I'm simply doing a window capture. So let's begin gonna zoom in on Princess Celestia's cutie mark, which you may notice is not a perfectly round circle, but that's okay. We're going to work with what we got. Now I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and I'm gonna draw a circle, holding down Shift to maintain the proportions. And then I'm going to use the selection tool actually the direct select tool. Selection tool will always take the whole object, but I want the direct select tool, which will allow me to grab these anchor points. If you think of the anchor points as like tacks on a, on a backboard and the path is just a string wound between each one. As you move the anchor points, you change the shape. And just like that, we have a slightly off plum circle, which is fitting. I mean, nothing in nature is a perfect circle. That would be incredibly uh, irrational. Now, selecting a color. You know, notice the creator of this, uh, Midnight Blitz, has been kind enough to provide codes. These are web codes. Basically, they're for easy selecting colors on the internet. Not so great, however, uh, if you're looking to say, uh, print these. Uh, this is designed for the internet, not for print. So don't rely on these for anything other than website development. So I could type in these color codes, although I think this one's a little too far as if I throw in all these Fs to offer respect, it doesn't work. Plus I fear I may not have enough Fs to give. So instead, I'm going to use the color picker tool. It's right over here. Now they call it the eyedropper. But either way, if I just click on this, you'll notice that now it's the matching color. Now, zoom in on this. Now, I could draw the outer circle in the exact same way, but I'm gonna try to do something different. And I'll go through the keyboard menu, uh, through the menus rather than the keyboard shortcuts, just because. We're gonna go to offset path. 
And we're going to tell it go 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 pixels off center. And what do you know? Well, the uh, core may be lopsided. It appears that the surrounding circle is a similar shape. And again, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. Make that the same color. Nice thing is the offset path command puts the new path behind whatever you selected. So it's a great way to build out from the center. Now, for these, mm, I'm not sure, flares off the sun, we're gonna go with our star tool, but we only need three points. It's quite the triangle, eh? We're gonna rotate it around. I don't need these midpoints just yet, so I'm gonna get rid of them. Keep this nice and simple. This is just using the minus uh, command. All I do is move the shapes there. Then I'm gonna add back some anchor points because I'm gonna need to alter this quite a bit. Again, direct select tool. Just keep changing the tax on the board. And now, while it looks rather uh, jagged, I'm going to use my Convert Shape tool. Oh, they call it the Anchor Point. See, there's 50 names for everything. But basically, all I do is click on the Anchor Point and drag it out, and it adds a curve. Now, when I use my Direct Select tool, I can pull this out even further. And we're gonna switch this from Fill to Outline, so I can see everything. Yeah, move this up just a little. Now there's actually an easier way to do this and I will tell you all about it when I do the next solar flare. Right now I'm just looking to get this as close to the shape as possible. While the MLP Vector Club folks are incredibly precise in their work, I'm a little laissez-faire. As long as people recognize, hey, that's Celestia's cutie mark, I've done my job. Let's add one more using the plus button. Just gonna inch this up and over, there we go. Now, there's two problems. It is one, improperly layered. So I'm gonna hit Command, Shift, and the open bracket to move it behind everything. And then I'm going to select this color. And there we have it, the first of several. Now using my direct, my selection tool and holding the alt button, I'm going to move this over and E for the free transform, I'm just gonna rotate it around. Let's see how close we get. Mm. Not terribly close, but close enough. See, all I gotta do is move these points. Again, good to switch to an outline so I can see the image below. This is the stroke. And then, bada bing, bada boom. Just nudge this over. There we go. Okay, so there's two solar flares, but let's try something else. I mentioned I was doing things the harder way. Let's take another triangle Get rid of these points. And just like before, we're gonna make them line up as close as we can. Now, instead of using a command to add anchor points right here, this guy, I'm instead gonna go over to my curvature tool. 
Curvature Tool does a lot of the work for me because it makes things automatically curve. Just by adding an anchor point and not letting go of the mouse, I drag it over. And down here. And up here. And there are lots of ways to change the curvature of a shape. This is all based on math, whereas something like Photoshop would have a bunch of little dots, pixels together, and let your eye do the blending. Illustrator is using a mathematical formula to create this shape. And so when I alter it, the equation changes as does the shape. And again, send it to the back. Looks like I could get a little closer on here. There we go. Again, holding down the alt, let's see how this guy looks. Could be closer. This makes me think that uh, someone, whoever designed Celestia's Cutie Mark, did each flare individually, which I find wonderful commitment to design so that it didn't look, even though it's just a small part of her character model, uh, they put in the work to make each bit individual, which is appreciated, although makes me, makes for slightly slower vectoring. Well, that's okay. You get, y'all get to see the whole point of this is to see how I vector. And sometimes, yes, it's a long process. It's slower, but it can also be oddly peaceful. Just seeing the points come together, seeing this collection of random parts combine into a greater image. It's especially pleasing doing a background and realizing, hey, I've come a long way from that first uh, dot. But, oh, there's nothing so intimidating as the blank canvas. Here we go. Bada bing. Bada boom. Let's just get rid of this. Yep. If I just delete that, the curve automatically corrects. Let's get rid of this guy too. And so on and so forth. All right. And we'll... Whoop. We'll copy this one. Ah, it's still stroke, that's why. Change it to a fill. Let's move this anchor point over just a little. There we go. Now let's try it. There we are. And again, we just change the anchor points to change the path. Now, it's worth noting that you can also draw a shape from scratch uh, using the pen uh, and pencil tools and this curvature tool, but I'm gonna save that for when I work on an actual character. For now, we're sticking with the shapes we've already got. Now here, using the direct select, uh, sorry, the selection tool, I'm just going to drag this out, change the size a little, and now we'll go back to changing the curvature. Oh, now see, I've got uh, an awkward one here. So again, convert point tool. Go. Move this over. Pull it in just a little tighter. And there we go. All right, so there I've got all my shapes. And I don't need the backdrop. Uh, Celestia's key mark is meant to be, well, a sun. But what I am going to do is I'm gonna select one of these solar flares 
I'm gonna select the same fill color and then using Command G, group them so they're all treated as a singular object. By the same notion, I will group the sun part as well. And there's a reason. Cutie, whoop, cap locks are on. Cutie, mark, I'm gonna set this up using the film and video preset. The dimensions of this artboard match your average computer screen or television at 720 uh, resolution. But for reasons I don't understand, Illustrator adds this second much larger artboard. We're just gonna delete that. I have no idea why they include that. All right, layer one. This is Sun 1. I guess I'll call it Celestia 1. And here, two, gonna put that below. Now, uh, I use Command X to cut uh, these paths. Now I'm gonna use Command F to pay respects and paste them in place. Another very handy tool that I rely on very often. And now with everything selected, I'm just gonna increase the size because we want this to be big. There we are. And I'll save that right there. Now, pardon me one sec, as I pull up my next image. Let's go with Princess Luna. My fave princess, and she's going to help me demonstrate another handy tool uh, that makes this easier. So again, we'll just lock this layer and we'll create a new one. That's where I'll be uh, drawing. Now, funny enough, her cutie mark is much more even, which really makes you wonder who's the more wild sister. Here we go. Eh, not quite. Maybe not a perfect circle. But if I rotate it. And scale it down. Mm, guess not. So let's just use the curvature tool. I will say it looks more even than Celestia's cutie mark, but I think I spoke too soon. Here we go. Now, I could curve the cutie mark, uh, curve the path to match the cutie mark even further, but I'm not going to because I want to show another neat little trick. We're going to draw another circle right about there, scale it down to right about there, and there. We have now two cutie marks and uh, two circles, and just to make it more visible, I said to make it more visible. There we go. So, with these selected, I'm going to go over to my Pathfinder tool. This allows you to take two shapes or more and have them interact in different ways. I could unite them, but instead, I'm going to divide them. In doing so, I've created a new shape. And if I simply delete these blue elements, boom, I've got Luna's Crescent. But we're not quite done. Using ink on, well, this appears to be just pitch black. Very rare sight in MLP. Funny story, there, uh, in alchemy, there are two terms for black. One of them is for matte black. It's, it's dull, it's unreflective. It is, well, basically death, uh, the end of vitality. 
It is it's sort of a consuming black. But then there is the rich black. It has a luster to it. It is a combination. It is, in a sense, dying in order to be reborn. Which, as a fan of Jungian concepts, that's actually something I very much uh, enjoy hearing about. So I'm going to assume that Luna and her cutie mark are the rich darkness that leads to rebirth. All right. And then one more circle. This one's going to require a bit more mm, change. If I double click on the curvature tool, I can actually take some of the curve out of it. So see, I can make this a bit more unbalanced. Or I can make this one more of a hard triangle. I think that works well for our purposes. Yeah, I'm gonna take this very large circle. I'm gonna change the anchor points again. Get the curvature to work with me. And just swing it around like so. So now I'm gonna take all these various shapes and in my Pathfinder, I will unite them. Now they are just one shape. And if I move it to the back, boom, there's Luna's crescent mark. And these are a lot simpler to create cutie mark or they're just little spheres all I gotta do is squish them squish them good and down here again I'm not making these one for one shape but I will show you something if I unite these four circles even though they're separated by distance, they are still treated as one compound path. Which is handy if you're looking to say, uh, have a set of images or shapes that you wanna move as one. Now, in this case, I will need a circle of just Luna's uh, coat. So I'm gonna move this. This one I do want to be a perfect circle. So, necklace and crown, hoofs and slippers, but mane and tail, nope. Here we go. Here's the fill for Luna, and we'll put her right here. Gonna take everything, group it together. Command X to cut. Go over to my Q mark constellation. Only one layer for Luna. but I'm gonna make it as large as possible because in the world of graphics, it's always easier to scale down than scale up. And the nice thing about Illustrator uh, files and vector images in general is that because they're based on mathematics, they never lose resolution. I can make this way, way larger and I will, uh, I will never lose resolution. Granted, at some point, the equation surpasses the computer's processing. I choose not to test that just yet. Now then, let's go down the line with the main six. Starting with A for Applejack. Alrighty. Applejack's got some more customized bits as well. We're just gonna... Once again, using the curvature tool. Well, that doesn't do much good for me. What about up here? Oh, not quite. There we go. And there we go. 
So you've modified one circle. And again, I could add more anchor points and just go along the edge here until I have a complete apple. Let's make this guy a point. There we go. And spread this out. Ring bada boom. And how nice the red cutie mark is right there. Now for, again, we need a three-pointed star, which is also known as a triangle. And there we go. I don't know, do my best strong bed. I stretch it and squish it and spin it all around. Same idea, L for ellipses? I'm not sure why, I, you can customize the keyboard uh, to whatever shortcuts you want. I don't know why they decided on some things rather arbitrarily, but hey. If you enjoy customizing and just know your own workflow, it takes a little bit, but I find that uh, the interface is relatively user-friendly. Or you just learn the commands and you just like, well, like me, you say, oh, ellipsis L, okay. So that's how you draw one apple. And theoretically from there, you can draw all the others. You could also use the ellipsis tool to say, match the shape of one half of an apple. There we go. And there we go. And then using another you just move, move the shapes around. And over here. Then back over to our friend, the Pathfinder, and boom. You've got a complete shape. Let's see here, you, move you just a little bit further. And boom. I appreciate that Applejack has a simple but distinct mark. It's much like the character. Not flashy, not a braggart, but personalized, individual, and very much containing surprising depth. As I can't simply copy paste the same apple three times over and call it a day. And let's see here, there we go. Looking good. Get this back to there. Now, here's a question. Could I copy these elements? And then using the reflect tool, I'm just gonna hit enter. And okay. How close do these resemble this guy? Well, a little bit of a stretch, but we can work with it. And down we go. Side note, I want to give a shout out to everyone who saw my appreciating Applejack panel at uh, Ponyville Cider Fest recently. Uh, it was good to hear everyone's thoughts on their favorite Applejack episodes. Got some pushback from folks who well, take umbrage with how Applejack is often hostile in her approach. And she does. She is. Uh, it's the duality. She is a pony for others, but at the same time, she's very set in what she, how she thinks should be. So, 
uh, that often brings her into conflict and perhaps undermines efforts to unite. But that's part of seeing her struggle. I mentioned the panel, so my thinking there's only one truly Applejack-centered episode, and that is the main attraction. You see all the elements of Applejack, her stubbornness, her uh, pride, her friendliness, and her affirmation of others. But in this one case, her family doesn't share center stage, and because of Countess Coco Cabana, uh, Applejack isn't in her normal elements of Ponyville. She has to figure out is who is the real Countess? Who's my real friend? Now, we're going to do something else with this. I'm going to group these apples together so they're treated as one item. And I'm going to select this circle I made. Select the two, and I'm going to align to selection, horizontal, horizontal align center, vertical align center. So let's take a look. Hmm. Based on the layout, this is the center. But now having established that, I'm going to shift them over just a little. There we go. That's better. And now we've got our Applejack part of the constellation. Scale her up to match Luna's size. Don't save. Again, thank you Midnight Blizz for making these available. But we move on to Fluttershy. Funny how my two favorite of the main six are right next to each other in numer in alphabetical order. It's very curious. But I ain't complaining. Now, offhand, these look more uniform. But that could just be me. It could be my eyes playing tricks. Like, sadie white devils. Let's find out. Hmm? Okay. Gotta increase the width on this just a little and give it more of a curve at the top here. There we go. And we're a point. Now, normally I said I do all this with uh, shapes. I could do this using the path tool, but let's keep the challenge going. There we go. Now it looks a little bit more antennae-ish. Now, sometimes it gets a little wonky. So then I just use my uh, convert tool and I start the curve over. I'm going to switch over to my curve tool because it takes some of the guesswork out. One antennae. Now, I'm going to make a copy. I'm going to use the reflect tool. And see how closely these two align. And just a little bit of adjustment here, there, everywhere. reason I'm not using a, uh, any of the pen tools to create an outline 
is because then we get, I want to save that for when I talk about, uh, well, shapes, strokes, and the uh, different widths you can do on a stroke. All right, so these butterfly elements all are the same color. Now I'm going to use the ellipse tool. Is it ellipse or elliptical? Nope, ellipse. So there's your bit of Illustrator trivia. It's called an ellipse. You down, bring you a little bit closer. And there we go. And we'll make another right this way. And there we go. Now Fluttershy, I, she's always been my favorite. I mean, at first I didn't have a favorite. I was still checking the show out. But Fluttershy won me over. I was very much like her growing up. Very shy, very quiet, very unsure. And it took a long time to develop what my family calls middle gears. As I think Fluttershy did. I mean, who she is at series start is not the same as series end. I especially appreciate where she admits, well, it's not even an admission, but pointing out you have to learn the same lesson a bunch of times because situations vary. Of course, I always feel like that guy in uh, Fame and Misfortune. I don't know how to feel about that. It's like, I am, I've been given what I seek. Now what do I do? And there we go. And there uh, we go. One, two, three, four. And let's see here. Let's use our Pathfinder to unite these and then change the color. Ooh. Ooh. Look at this. It's hard to see, but if you look at the shape, let's get rid of this one and move this guy up a little. Oops. Maybe change the curvature of this anchor point. Let's add one back in, because this is just a slightly tricky angle. There we go. Now the moment of truth. I'm gonna group all this into one shape, and I'm just gonna see if, as it's a group, I can select it with just one click and holding down the Alt button and dragging it over, I can make another. How uniform are her butterflies? Oh. I'd say if I just change the size a little, they're pretty darn uniform. I wonder what that says about Fluttershy, that she's equally kind to others, that there's not a whole lot of qualifiers. Applejack has individualized apples, Fluttershy, a bit more uniform? That's interesting. Well, either way, I think these are just close enough we are. And now I just need to fill off her coat. coat. Again, I'm going to group the three butterflies, select the circle. Okay, these seem to align better than uh, Applejack's apples. Oh, 
Now, I don't know why it was over there, but here's what we can do. Align to artboard. It will center everything in relation to the artboard rather than the selection. Effect, Applejack, and Luna. There, now we are all aligned. I won't touch the Celestia, because those should be, well, honestly, those should be aligned regardless. But let's make sure. There we go. You'll find I may contradict myself at points, I think aloud. A trait of my family. All right, Midnight Blitz. Once again, thank you. Now we move on to the Pinkie Pie. Here we go. This one seems pretty straightforward. Seems. We're just going to use our ellipse. And then a rectangle, which is M for matchbox? I don't know. But all we gotta do is rotate it with the free transform. Pull this over and then use curve tool. to alter the shape. So, now instantly. Now, a bit more complicated is the stream. So again, we're gonna just go with a basic, well, it's a rectangle, practically it looks like a straw. And what? And a two. And do you know what to do? There we go. Put one there, drag this down. Now, Truth be told, Pinky is probably my least favorite of the main six. Not an active dislike, but a character with whom I have a hard time getting into her headspace. She has a positivity and uh, energy level that I often wish I could emulate. But oddly enough, I think I identify with her more when she's struggling, when she's not sure of how to make something fun or how to fit in, or perhaps is just struggling to realize how she done goofed. There, but there are times where I empathize with her. It's just that normally I look to her for well, in entertainment and energy. Okay. There we go, it's looking pretty close. There we go. Let's roll with that. And cutie mark. Blue. Send that to the back. Oh, and while we're at it, let's unite these shapes. There we go. Now, I'm willing to bet that at least the string needs changing. Oh. Uh-oh. Did I? Oh, I forgot. Here we go. Let's get these on their own layer. Send you to the back of this layer. That's why it vanished from sight for a minute there. Okay, so not, not as much uniformity as Fluttershy's cutie mark. So 
So let's modify this from the base upwards as the base is the more, mm, well, I won't say hugely complex, but it's definitely the more detailed part. Here we go. And here we go. Now I find uh, Izzy so often compared to Pinkie Pie, but Izzy seems far more vulnerable than Pinkie, afraid of losing friends. Uh, if you, the sharp-eyed have spotted a birthday letter from Izzy to Izzy, which if that doesn't feel just a little heartbreaking, uh, I don't know if we're on the same wavelength. Izzy, if Izzy is the same as Pinky, then she's also a reflection of how much the world has changed. An eccentric like Pinky would be adored throughout the entire community of Bridalwood. In this mo in this new era, Izzy seems more an outcast. But I don't view Izzy and Pinky as being a one-to-one -one comparison. I believe that Izzy has her own traits and her own creativity that is a very different and distinct expression from Pinkie Pie. Sure, energy level are pretty darn similar, but it doesn't mean that just because a character is high energy doesn't mean it's the same personality. There you go. Now we're gonna drag this over, reflect it. Oh, this one's pretty darn close, I think. Let's make you an outline, okay. And, hmm. I wonder if this might be a better base to start from. There we go. And here's this, 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 this. There we are, three little party balloons. Now for a pink backdrop. so she can match her friends very good save this because I definitely don't want to now that I'm halfway through the main six I don't want to miss out no saves there thank you no saves there and let's see here oh now we're in for a challenge in fact, I'd say of all the main six, this Rainbow Dash is probably the most complex. I mean, will you look at this thing? It's like her, it's like the key mark owner, bold and bright and eh, a bit more complex. So you know what, we're gonna, again, I usually would just outline this shape, but we're doing a challenge by using other shapes to create this. So let's try a little something. 
we're going to take a bunch of ellipses. There we go. And one down here. And we're going to change the curve on this one. There we go. Ba -doom, ba -doom. And we're just going to unite these as one shape. Switch it back to an outline. But then, again, using the offset command, so command nine, We're going to go to the negatives and draw it in on itself. Okay. Now, not quite the same. This is not a uniform shape. So just a little bit of a curvature there. And we'll get rid of that one. We get rid of that one. Can always make another. And then, well, let's get rid of that guy. There we go, down here. All right, so. Two ways we could go about this. Right there, I could call that uh, Rainbow Dash's key mark and just call it good. I could also use the divide tool to delete the interior and have a flexible cloud shape to work with. It all depends on what you need. So let's see here. Use a rectangle for this last detail. So one point goes there, one point goes there, another point goes there, and one more point there. Here, I need you to be a sharp point. There we go. And over and around. Down that goes and down that goes. Now we need a second point right up here. And there you go. Rainbow's little cloud swirl. Now Note, using the direct select tool, I can take just this inner shape and make it, oh, I can't make it white, but I can copy it, paste it in place, make it white and put it in the back. Put it in the back, there we go. Let's zoom in real close on this here cloud. So that's half the battle right there. But now comes the even funner part, Rainbow Dash's lightning bolt. I appreciate that it only features three colors instead of her full array on her, on her coat. But let's see here, let's go with our star tool again. Three points should do it. There's three points, but, I, but six anchor points, I don't understand. Let's move you up here. You up here. There we go. Come on. I'm clicking and clicking. 
Guess it doesn't want to behave. Oh well. There are many tools, so if one tool isn't working, sometimes you just change the process. Otherwise, you're stuck trying to force one tool to do the work of many others. It's like trying to build a house with just the hammer. I imagine there's some innovative uh, craftsman who could actually accomplish that, but I wouldn't want to ask them to do it. Too worried about this part. It's going to go behind the other cloud, the cloud anyway. But one question: If I duplicate this, not quite symmetrical. That's okay. I'm just going to tweak the shape a little. And then bring this over. Right, you will be my yellow portion of the cloud. You will be the red. And last but certainly not least, my favorite color, a blue. And there we go. Now you may notice I'm not worried too much about this outline stroke. Here we go. Let's make these guys solid. One, two, three. And again, we're gonna use the divide. And that's just a matter. See, everything's been cut up with how it intersects. So, like this part here can go away. This part here and this part here. All of these can go away. And I just got to make a small correction here. And bada bing bada boom. The most, what I would consider to be the most difficult of the paint six now are complete. Let's fill in the background here. Group the rainbow dash mark and align it with circle. There we go. Boom. Oops. Put it on its own layer. That's going to be important in a little bit. Rainbow Dash, Pink Pie, Fluttershy, Applejack, Luna, Celestia. We only got two more of the main six to go. Oh, pardon me as I stretch. I appreciate if you stuck with me this far. But don't be afraid to get up and stretch yourselves. All right. The fairer Miss Rarity, whom it appears has a uniform look to the diamonds. The diamonds are here. So let's start real simple. Just a circle. And you notice that if I trace this as a line, it's not perfectly aligned. So we're just going to rotate this. And spread it out. 
spread it out just a little. And let's see what happens if we duplicate these. Instead, we use the reflect tool vertically. It's okay if it goes beyond the diamond. We're about to tackle that. And then one here. There we go. Offset path. Oh, and it syncs up rather nicely. Let's say right there, we'll just take a little bit of the curvature off. Okay. So this will be Rarity's diamond. And then from a simple square, rectangle, what have you. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Oh, did I not get this center point? I guess I didn't. Let's fix that real quick. See, one of the fun things, if you select an item and then switch to the shape, the color will remain consistent. So that's one little time saver. So you don't always have to use the eyedropper tool. All right, so I got all these shapes. Now comes the grand, well, cutting and uniting. So first thing we're gonna do is use the divide tool. Divide tool pathfinder, there you are. Use that, I'm just gonna trim away these little bits here. And why not, I'll get rid of the rounded end here, so. But you'll notice that leaves this divided piece. Uniting it clears up all these stray bits into one solid shape. And then similar process here. Using the divide tool, I can now trim away the excess. In another video, I'll go over clipping paths and their marvelous usefulness, especially the character's eyes. But for here, we just want the basic diamond shapes and we don't want to have a lot of excess data And it does look like in true rarity form, these diamonds are perfectly symmetrical because symmetry and balance is a big part of design. Including, I will point out, the choice to break with symmetry. Alrighty, that behind, group the diamonds. And one and two. Group it all together. Cut. And I've already got a rarity layer ready and waiting. There we go. Save that and we're down. Ironically, the first and foremost of the main six is the last in the numeric, uh, alphabetical order. Numerical, alphabetical, either way, Twilight is her own thing. But here's the fun part. I've been using the star tool to make triangles. Now I can make it, use it to actually make star stars. Stars. So let's go with six points. Granted, it's not looking quite 
like Twilight Stars just yet. That's because I went with a very uniform radius. So there's one part of the star. Now, if I were to say, reduce the points by 20 pixels, that'd be too much. But then if I stretch them out, I'm curious how well these align. Not terribly, that's okay. Just put this behind. and an outline stroke view so I can uh, match up the angles. This one's pretty simple. Even though Twilight has one of the busier uh, cutie marks with all these points around her, it's actually, it's very simplistic. A combination of activity without going into heavy detail. Later cutie marks like Sugar Bell would be ridiculous in how many colors, shapes, and even gradients they integrate. No. There we go. And up we go. Just change the points. Stars are relatively easy to manipulate given that they're all angles and points. I do appreciate that these stars around Twilight, how shall I put it? They are individual. They have quirky mannerisms, just like her friends. So some of the main six, like Fluttershy, they have a more, uh, she and Rarity have more uniform cutie marks. Whereas Pinky and Applejack have variety within their marks. Rainbows is, I think, the boldest. And Twilight's is the most active with little quirks here and there. Which I think sums up the characters pretty well. Switch the stroke on this one because I need to know how this looks. And there we go. So let's group these together. Take up a fill. There we are. Hmm, that looks a little off center, even though it's not. I trust the computer's calculations, but I trust my eyes and a sense of balance as well. All righty. And there, last but certainly not least, is Twilight. So, from the bottom, we've got Celestia Solar Flares, Celestia's Cutie Mark, Luna's Cutie Mark, doing a bit of an eclipse here, Applejack, Fluttershy, Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, Rarity, and Twilight. Sorry, Spike, I'll try to feature you in another video. But thank you for watching with as I work on this. 
uh, for hearing me ramble as I work or think aloud. Quick save to make sure I don't lose this. And I next time I will show you all how I use uh, line tools and strokes to create characters. So until then, I hope this has been a bit informative and maybe encouraged you to try working with Illustrator and vectors on your own. Until next time, I'm Silver Quill. Thanks for watching.